You're watching Witness. No White in the Rainbow is a film about the measures South Africa's white farmers are taking to protect their land. But there's another side to this story and another argument, that it's not really their land at all and that the government has a duty to get land back into the hands of the majority black population. Sipoe Ingomane is a farmers' rights activist. He tries to prevent illiterate farmers from signing such dubious contracts. Sipoe says another way white farmers force black tenants off the land is bullying them and making their lives impossible. A white farmer will, for example, make life extremely unbearable for a tenant by locking up gates, closing the water supply, and also ensuring that uh, if it's a woman, uh, the husband is not allowed to come and live with uh, and children. If it's a man, the wife and children are not always allowed. Yeah. They want to protect their privileges. That is why they are saying that there's reverse racism. Salome Vessel says the larger politics of the land fight are not her concern. She wants protection and security now. She practices shooting from a moving car. The course participants practice a hunting technique, learning to kill a moving target hiding in the bush. It's a real kind of tough work. <laughs> it is really a kind of release. I release the aggressive part out of my body. <laughs> These farmers worry that even if they learn to stave off physical attacks, they will be unable to defend against another threat, the state expropriation of their land. According to government figures, white farmers own 87% of the cultivated land. The government contends much of this land was confiscated under colonial and apartheid rule. It is offering compensation packages to redistribute 24 million hectares by 2014. As of October of 2006, if farmers refuse to take the deal voluntarily, the government can theoretically enforce its price and seize the land. They know very well that we need to correct this imbalance in order that there be peace, stability and economic development. They cannot be the only ones enjoying the benefits of South African economy to the exclusion of 21 million people in South Africa. White farmers argue they did not personally confiscate land. It was done long ago. They also contend if they are removed from the land, black tenant farmers will mismanage the properties. And as in Zimbabwe, there will be acute food shortages. The only thing that keeps this, this place stable is the fact that we produce our own food. Remove the food produ production, the element that does produce the food, and we're going to have an entire Africa starving. As long as murderous gangs roam the land and the government threatens to take away their homes, white farmers will not likely give up the weapons they see as their last line of defense. Possessing such weapons without a proper license can mean a 10-year jail sentence. <laughs> They're very powerful, aren't they? Yes, yes. What do you think about that? <laughs> it is disgusting for me. You cannot use these weapons against any animal, so you have to use it against another person. And it is very um, embarrassing for me. But she doesn't want to end up like her friends Clem Ferreira and his wife Anna Paula. Last summer, a gang broke into their ranch house. They dragged Anna Paula to their car. Clem fired at them. I pick up here and I pick up there. They shot back. But as they fled, they kicked her out of the car. It was then they decided to leave their farm for good. And the second time, Clem? And move to Valvater and work only in their mini market. I was watching TV. They shot quite a few times at me. I'm very lucky to be alive. I think they will never stop going there and try to kill me to take the money and other goods. 
desesperada tudo eu vim fui a like South Africa like everyone but like that I can't carry on and live in this country Fimbeli Satole believes that discrimination against farmers is colorblind. Okay. Like Clem and Anna Paula, she is a farmer. Mm -hmm. It's hard enough. Yeah. And like Clem and Anna Paula, she feels the government's policies are aimed at stealing her land. She owns a farm in Dorncorp, 30 kilometers from Johannesburg. Declared Female Farmer of the Year in 2006, Thimbeni has paid off all her government loans. Yet the authorities say they will expropriate her farm to make way for housing developments. I feel bad if they want to remove me because I'm a farmer and I'm living with farming and I'm helping even the community, the HIV people, and the people who are working with me. I'm, I'm still helping, helping them to feed their families. So if they are moving me away, uh, I feel cheated. Maureen Mancini is an activist in the Landless People's Movement. She has come to learn more about Thimbeni's case and the neighboring farmers, all of whom are facing eviction. If they remove me here, they must give me another farm and everything that I have got in the farm. There's any money that you borrow from land bank like that? Yeah, my start, I got the, the money from land bank, the 25,000. What you've got in the farm? Mm, structures like poultry, mm. Mm, piggery, irrigation system. Okay, so he, he will take Maureen believes the government should expropriate only white-owned farmland that is not being cultivated. Mm. The land that is not being used, the government should, should take that land and give it to the people, the people who are suffer. So the old and used land that is not being used, the government have to utilize that land for the poor people. Maureen is meeting other farmers at Thimbeni's house to organize opposition. Not knowing exactly what they are planning a large protest in Johannesburg the next day. These are the farmers you should have met. Yes. Or you should arrange to meet. Mm. Hello. But the plan is in trouble. The South African police called and said they will not issue a permit for the protest. We are going to march. If they want to arrest us, they must arrest us. We are going to march because we do everything in our power, and then it's their fault if maybe they didn't follow the, the you know, what they're supposed to do. I want to make it. 24 hours later, thousands of protesters gather at Johannesburg's train station. The police look on, but don't interfere. Millions of poverty-stricken South Africans are seething with anger and frustration. Local officials warn that if three million hectares of white farm land are not transferred to poor blacks every year, there's a real threat of radicalization within the country. Radicalization that could spark brutal seizures like those in neighboring Zimbabwe. Meanwhile, white Afrikaner farmers like Jan and Salume Veso are preparing. They believe more violent attacks are inevitable. Some say it is already a war. I'm prepared now, more confident with the use of my weapon. And for sure, I think I will use it against my enemy. <laughs> it is either your life or his, everyone has to think of it, his own life. So yes, I will choose to shoot. And I think I will definitely use my weapon against the en en enemy. Sad, I suppose, to see a 14-year-old having to learn to use a rifle. So far since the end of the apartheid regime, only about 3 million hectares of land has been transferred to poor blacks. That's less than 2% of the available agricultural land. And it's difficult, of course, to see how everyone's rights can be respected in situations like this. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again on Witness.